What's up guys? Today we're gonna to be doing some overhead 7018. In my opinion, overhead welding is just as easy as welding flat. It's literally just the same rod angles, just upside down. And once you realize that and you keep a tight arc, it's the same thing, the puddle burns exactly the same way. So a lot of the times whenever an instructor's teaching you how to weld, you know, running bead or stringers, he's gonna, in the flat position, he's gonna teach you a rod angle like this. And a rod angle like this is basically just allowing you to pull the puddle you know, so you're not pushing any slag. If you can just remember this position, literally the same thing, but upside down. So as I'm not coming in pushing, I'm doing the same rod angle, just upside down. So whatever angle you want, you know, some people go steeper, some people kind of lean it out a little bit. It's the same thing upside down. I kind of, I like to, I don't do a massive, you know, angle. I kind of just come in tweak a little bit and start burning and with overhead any any uh position keep a tight arc but it's specifically for overhead because people are trying to dodge the sparks or you know the scared of the fire the tighter you keep the arc the clearer the puddle is going to be so just don't be scared you know make sure you have good ppe on and if you're pushing the puddle you know you're keeping a tight arc it's going to be more clear the farther the farther you long arc it's going to get blurry you know you're not gonna be able to see anything so just remember to always keep a tight arc in any welding position, but specifically for overhead. And the puddle literally becomes so much clearer. So let's go ahead and run some beads. Show you what they look like after. All right, definitely not my prettiest, but I don't see any porosity, so kept a fairly decent arc. And with the 7018 rods, whenever you strike, and if you pull out too far, a lot of times you're going to get porosity. So when you strike, make sure you keep a tight arc immediately. I know it's hard because most of the time you think you're going to stick, but if you strike and then pull out real far, that allows oxygen to get in between the arc and the weld, and that causes porosity. So whenever you strike, try and, try and keep it close. And for this next... For the next uh, pass, same thing as flat. You know, don't aim in here. You know, don't aim away. Don't don't try me too far, but just strike and then let it cover 50% and then just keep going. It's going to be the same exact thing as flat. All right, guys. So I think the most important tip with 7018 in any position, I find it the most with overhead. That's what I struggle with it the most. If you strike an arc and you have a gap, you know, you're long arcing right when you strike the arc. It's gonna, you're gonna get porosity in there and then you're gonna have porosity for the first maybe half an inch of the weld and then it'll start cleaning up and you think, you think everything's going good. But if you bend right where that start is, it's gonna fail every time. So the most important thing you can do is when you strike an arc, keep a tight arc immediately. Don't strike an arc and pull away and then try and like, you know, do your overlap. Strike an arc, keep, keep a real tight arc and then you can start moving. But if you strike an arc and you allow distance in between the arc and the weld, I don't know the science of it, but oxygen is going to get into there and you're going to fail a bend test. I don't know the science. I just know the reality of it. You're not going to get the job. So just remember to always keep a tight arc immediately. And a good thing about keeping a tight arc is you can see more. The, if, you, if you shove it in there and you can get a tight arc, the puddle becomes so much clearer. So that's what you want anyways. So don't strike an arc and pull away. Strike an arc, get... Get the puddle exactly where you want and then start moving but don't don't create a gap in between the arc and the puddle because you are going to get porosity you are going to fail the job and it's not going to be good so just remember that and you should be good to go so strike an arc keep a tight distance Damn, that fireball got me right in the chest. Glasses got really foggy at the end, so I started welding blind, but it's all right. You can, we can fix that on the next pass. All right, so you don't have to point directly into here. I know I say this all the time, 
but I feel like that's what a lot of people try to do to cover 50%. All you have to do is strike your arc, hold it here. You know, don't start moving immediately. Get it the size you want, you know, the 50% overlap, and then just keep everything the same throughout the whole bead. If you strike and hold your arc, you know, you strike and then hold your puddle until it gets the size you want. That's all you have to do, and then just maintain that throughout the whole thing. And if you get little stuff like this where, you know, you mess up on the end, do not, don't get all worked up and don't get frustrated. Just know that if you keep a 50-50 coverage, you can fix most of these little imperfections. No one's ever going to know about it if you fix it perfectly. If you make this next pass look perfect, you know, overlapping, no one's ever going to know. So don't get worked up. Little stuff like this happens all the time. As long as you can fix it with your next pass, you know, clean it out, clean out all the slag, no one will ever see it. No one will ever know it's there. So just always remember that. Don't get frustrated. You got me. I don't got my glasses on. All right, guys. So this is what I got right now. A little three bead overlap. I know I'm not perfect, but the main thing you just want to look for is no porosity, especially with this overhead. I don't know why, but this is when I got the most porosity, you know, just by that long arcing and keeping, you know, a distance in between the arc and the weld. As long as you don't have any porosity, you should be good to bend. And this little thing that I was showing you before, you can kind of fix stuff as you go. I know I'm not the best, but, you know, if you see something that you don't like on your previous bead, just try and make your last, your next bead as good as possible. And most of the time you can cover imperfections. You know, I know I'm not the best, but this is basically what you want your little three bead cap to look like. I'll run some more, but most of the time when you're taking a weld test, it's going to be a three bead or four bead cap. But yeah, this is what I got so far. All right, so I said this in the beginning of the video, and I'll say it again. The most important thing when welding overhead, or 7018 in general, is keeping a tight arc. If you're getting porosity right here in the beginning of the weld, it's because you're striking an arc and you're immediately pulling out. You, I mean, even a quarter inch is too much. You want to strike the arc and be a 16th inch away. Get your overlap and then start moving. If you strike your arc and then you're getting a gap, you're going to get porosity in this area every single time for the first half inch and uh, until you start pushing it back in but i mean this whole area is going to be bad bad to band bad to x-ray anything so when you strike your arc get get the puddle the size you want and then start moving keeping a tight arc is not only going to prevent porosity you're going to prevent undercut you know the weld's not going to look good if you have a, a long arc so just get in the habit of striking arc keeping it tight and then moving and like i said earlier Keeping a tight arc, you can see the puddle so much more clear. So you want to get in the habit of doing that anyways. Because if you're striking the arc and you're long arcing, you're not going to see your puddle. It's not going to look good. So strike your arc. Keep a tight arc. And then you're going to be able to see everything so much more clear. And then your weld's going to always look better. 